Hey, Sharp Go Photo Challengers, welcome to week number nine. Signs of Spring was the challenge this week. So I challenge you to get outside and start capturing those images that speak to you as spring, even though in southern Ontario we were having a freak weather a wet weather event and uh, we got a snowy spring day last Tuesday, the day after the challenge came out, which also gives rise to some cool challenges and makes you actually look for those shots of spring. But let's see what you guys thought of the spring weather. Uh, thank you, Pete. Pete Zabo. Why am I not following you? I'm going to follow you right now. Pete Zabo, thank you very much for contributing to week number nine. Um, let's see here. Swing, tire swing set. Cool. I love me a tire swing. That's a lot of fun in the, in the, in the spring and summer. Cool. And with the 60D, with your Tamron 2875 uh, at F9. And uh, you chose the right shutter for that, for freezing the action. Very cool. The tricky thing with motion like this is, is trying to get yourself into a vantage point where you can always keep the subject's face clear and uh, unobstructed. In here, it almost gets hidden. Uh, it's, again, in this sort of posture, though, it's really tough to be in a spot where you can uh, keep the face always visible to the camera. So this one, you got, uh, it was good timing. You got, uh, you got the shot here. Um... And uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm not quite sure. With the, the hands up on the stick, it's 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 in danger of uh, covering the uh, the subject's face. So, um, and you shot at program, huh? I so rarely see people shoot at program. Is that something you prefer, Pete? Uh, I don't even shoot in program myself. I'm not even. Uh, I'm. I hardly ever, ever, ever use it. So I'm curious about that. If you prefer that that mode, uh, let me know about that. So yeah, ISO is down, shutter is up, and uh, with this, you chose that F9. Why did you choose that F9? You, if you wanted to isolate your subject a little bit more, especially with this car in the background and, and whatnot, uh, you could probably open that sucker up and speed the shutter right up. This is the you know this is action, and you've got daylight that will that you know, on your side. So with all the daylight, you can uh, bump that shutter. You can speed that shutter up to freeze the action as much as you like. Um, and uh, close that down. So um, unless there was a reason that you chose that. I didn't read your notes. Where are your notes? Two shots of my niece in her Easter dress during uh, enjoying the spring warmth. Three shots related to the last day of maple tree sap run and a local farm-based maple syrup cookhouse. Okay, we'll get to those. So I'd like to know, uh, yeah, why you chose F9. Uh, if if that was a, a, uh, a choice that you want to keep the, the all the background info or want to keep the background in more focus uh, and uh, didn't want to do it at uh, 2.8, um, I'd love to know your reasons. Just 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 curious, what's going on in your head? That's all. Anna, oh my God, that's a lovely. Okay, I need to refresh. See if those uh, if the settings information. There we go. Okay, f two point eight. There we go. See, that's okay. And I now see why you why you may have chosen f nine uh, to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room because at f two point eight, it's a shallower depth of field, and with motion, depending on how fast Anna here is moving, it may be uh, it's going to be more of a challenge to get in focus. So this one's a little bit soft focus here, but it's such much better moment too. And her face is smiling. It's, fa it's she's looking at the camera. It's open. You can see all of her face. Uh, and the shutter speed is bumped right up to one eight one eight thousand, so it, it that shouldn't have been a problem. But again, yeah, it's it's tough, a lot tougher to grab focus. One thing that may help is uh, if you have enough time to preempt this at all, uh, you can try throwing it into manual. Uh, and focus on a single point. So in this case, if Anna's swinging towards and away from you on the swing, or even, uh, yeah, I guess it would have to be like towards and away from you, you can pick a point and try to focus on that, focus manually on it so that it won't change and you don't have to wait for your camera to uh, quickly focus before it takes the shot. Your, your focus is locked to that certain point using manual focus. Uh, so that you can just wait until Anna occupies that frame, that point where you focused on, and then boom, take the shot, and you've got a nice, uh, nice in focus shot. So that's one thing. If uh, if grabbing uh, focus on her was an issue, that's one thing that might hopefully help. But I love this frame a lot better. Uh, so let's like take all the settings of this one and I'll apply it to this one, because this is a much better moment to capture. I love that you that you saw that, much better. Maple tree, cool, very very cool shot there of the maple tree, uh, and a nice open field. Yep, that's very spring, um, and good for yeah f8. Uh, that's you know that's a good uh, good settings to, to have for shooting a tree out in the field like that. Um, yeah, very cool.
Now this is, ooh, nice lighting. Very cool moment. What were the settings? Hopefully Flickr will tell me. It doesn't always want to load the settings. I see. F2.8, 1 over 250. Okay. Uh, this here, what is off? Okay, this is an instance maybe that f2.8 may have been perhaps the wrong thing, or at least uh, you have to pick what to focus on, because here we've got the bottle in his hand uh, uh, in focus, uh, which I'm not quite sure even what's in there really, if he's taking a look at the quality of water, if he's adding something, I guess, uh, adding something like an extract or something like that, uh, I'm not sure, to, um, you know, to, to make the maple syrup or what. Uh, but the focus should be on this man on this face here So uh, either reframe to get out to get the face out and just be able to frame up What's going on on the right side of the frame here or focus on the man's face? Or if you don't want to if you want to keep the man's face and his hand all in focus Then you've got to close up the uh, close up your iris there to maybe like 5.6 to allow yourself a little bit of difference because uh, the bottle in the hand here is at a different distance to the camera than this gentleman's face is. That's why it's out of focus while his hand is in focus. So that may be a choice to make. Either you want to cut out that uh, the other person's face because the person's face is naturally going to be what most people will, uh, what most people's eyes will be drawn towards when they see your image right away. Uh, that's just kind of what's built in. So it, it, we we just naturally do that. Uh, we naturally look for go f uh, for the eyes first. So if you're gonna have someone in frame that's out of focus, then uh, be sure to ask yourself, okay, is this person gonna is this dist this blurred out person's face going to distract me? Um, and then make a decision. Then either change your f stop or uh, reframe, or find an another way around it. And oftentimes, uh, not often is it. It's not always an issue, so you kind of just have to judge accordingly. Syrup bucket. Ooh, that's a classic looking shot. I love the black and white of this. Uh, it's very beautiful. The contrast of this. I, I, yeah, I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, you know, your settings are good. Uh, it uh, could even be if you wanted to punch up the contrast a little bit uh, in in Lightroom. It can it uh, can afford to do that, uh, but uh, not necessarily. What what was your focus point here? Again, um, make sure uh, what you know. Uh, always ask yourself what is the focus point here especially when you're shooting at 2.8 because it's gonna you know uh, you, you need to really uh, determine what your focus point is because most of your image if it's not on the same plane uh, is gonna as the object is that you're uh, that you're focusing on it's gonna be out of focus so that is part of deciding what uh, the settings uh, what settings you're going to choose when you take a shot so it, if I had to guess it looks like maybe you, you focus on the dial here uh, if that looks about right when uh, on the faucet here or even on the bucket just focusing on you know, this this part right there uh, might have been better because it's centered and also the subject seems to be more because of the, because of the composition it looks like the, the composition is lending itself more to the faucet and the bucket um, so that is what I would have done otherwise that's a very good composition I love the wood in the background it's all together it's it's a very nicely composed image and it serves very well as a black and white awesome if i had to pick a favorite um that one if it was in focus that would be it um you know what i will say that faucet and bucket sh uh, that faucet and bucket shot that was a very good shot uh and i dig it very very much uh i wish the focus was different but uh but other than that it's a good one. Thank you very much for participating in week number nine, Pete. You've been with us uh, on and off for a little bit. I love it when you do contribute to your to the challenges. Uh, some of your shots really show your skill growing, and I really like seeing uh, I really like seeing the shots that you send in. Thank you for submitting, and I hope to see you back next week.